Harmony. Have you ever wondered how and why notes work together within a complete musical system? The relationship between tones can actually be broken down into the fields of psychology, which we'll dispose of as quickly as possible, biology, which we'll just not talk about, and physics, which is really neat. So, the psychology. Humans find it pleasant when certain combinations of notes are sounded relative to each other. This is called consonance. Other combinations cross the line into a degree of unpleasantness, dissonance, and frankly, we don't know why. As Paul Hindemith, a German composer, musician, and teacher wrote, the two concepts have never been completely explained and for a thousand years, the definitions have varied. It seems like the human brain's tendency to like recognizable patterns may be a factor, as frequently nice sounding combinations have low whole number frequency ratios. Now for the physics. I just used a couple of terms you might not know. Frequency and pitch. Frequency is just a metric for how quickly a cycle is repeating itself, and its international system unit is hertz. Because sound is just repeated vibrations in a medium, which is usually air, we can actually measure the frequency of a sound wave by just seeing how many times a medium is vibrating every second. Pitch is a musical term for the frequency of a sound. Here's how springy objects are. When struck, plucked, shaken, etc., they will vibrate and produce a sound. Some objects provide purer vibrations than others. But what determines the pitch of the sound? There are a number of factors, but with music, length of the object is a large and easy to visualize one. With this string, for example, I have a shaking device on the right end, and so I can shake that end at a varying frequency until we find a frequency that causes the string to vibrate in a single loop like this. This is the first resonant frequency, or first harmonic, and I'll call this frequency F1. Ramping up the frequency, we can see that the resonance doesn't occur again until we reach 2 times F1. This is the second harmonic. Continuing this pattern, it will look like a string one nth of the original length will have a first resonant frequency at n times f1. It's this theoretically infinite series of frequencies that is the basis of musical systems. Humans perceive the change in frequency in a nonlinear way. When hearing the harmonic series, it sounds like the notes bunch up pitch-wise in higher harmonics. The human ear finds the second harmonic of frequency 2 times F1 to have a remarkable property. It sounds like the same note, but higher. In Western musical traditions, this relationship is called an octave due to historical reasons. All higher harmonics can thereby be divided down by 2, possibly multiple times, until an equivalent note is found between the first and second harmonics. This produces frequencies which are improper fractions, with low whole numbered numerators and denominators, of the original frequency, and forms a series of notes from one note to its octave. This sounds like a logically developed and usable musical system, right? Wrong! Actually it would be, uh, except that the interval between each of these harmonies also needs to sound harmonic, and it doesn't. Here's what I mean. A musical system needs to have a manageably small number of notes in it, otherwise there's just too much to keep track of and it's impractical to use. An example is the main western musical system of only 12 distinct notes. Perfect intervals, harmonies, need to be able to be played based on any note. Basically, we need to be able to stack any number of perfect harmonies and have the final note be fairly harmonic to the starting note. The imperfection I mentioned before can be quickly seen by stacking up 12 3 over 2 harmonics and comparing the outcome to stacking up 7 2 over 1 harmonics. They come out very close, closer than the difference of a single note, but not very near being the same. This problem can't be perfectly solved, so while music contains realms of subjectivity and perception that arise from psychology and biology, much of the foundational color and variety across the many musical systems is actually driven by the laws of physics.